only provide protection, but would also serve, as I said, for the patient, the nurses, and the doctors, and also make the hospital look very beautiful. The hospital administration officers express gratitude for targeting their hospital as beneficiaries of this noble gesture. Trees are very good uh, 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 um, partners people can live with because taking care of these trees, especially in the hospital setting here, you can see other trees have been goodly uh, um, taken care of. We have very good personnel on the ground who will be taking care of these trees. And not only to plant these trees and leave them there, we have to nurture them and make sure that they benefit every individual who comes to the hospital and even not coming. But one way or the other, they will really benefit. World Environment Day is celebrated on the 5th of June annually. The theme for this year is green economy. Does it include you? The Ministry of Forestry and Environment is hoping to spark collective action by engaging the citizenry and stakeholders to a massive tree planting exercise during the rainy season to plant as many trees as possible. Samuel Ba, GRTS. A particular group in the Kanafing municipality is trying to rekindle interest among youths in the values and ideals of scouting. Naikumadema reports. I will do my best to do my duty to, do my duty. to God, to God. And, to my and to my country to help other people, to help other people. and to keep to the scout law. And to keep to the scout law. Scout motto. It was a colorful event designed to introduce new interns into the fold of the SCART family. Scouting prepares an individual to make a meaningful contribution towards the development of one's nation. An investiture is an important ceremony in the life of a scout, because after going through the training, a decision is made to take up the challenges to becoming a scout. It's not the end, but it's the beginning of your career as scout. Then I thank you all and... I would like to advise you to keep up the job. Training officer Nyagangam urges the new intakes to keep to all the laws of Scout and to uphold the principles of this noble organization. Scout is clean in thought, words and deeds. So brothers and sisters Scouts, please, this is what you're coming to take up. This is the, the type of life you are expected to live. This is the type of activities you are expected to embark on. The gathering saw the presence of Imam Abdullahi Fati of the State House Mox, himself a former scout, reminded young people of their roles and responsibilities in society. He commended their parents for allowing them to join this noble organization. The graduating class were given some valuable words of advice by the public relations officer, Gambia Armed Forces Captain Abdullahi Mbub. The Army PRO warned the gathering of the immense dangers of illegal drug abuse. The I will urge you to avoid drugs. Drugs are the fastest way of spoiling your lives, and the best way to stop it is not to start it at all. I assume you all know Tanka Tanka Psychiatric Hospital. It is very sad and disheartening to see the young boys and girls who happen to be your age mates battling with mental illness because of drug and substance abuse. You are at a very critical age in your life, and at this stage, whatever you start, good or bad, is likely to follow you throughout your life. The investiture ceremony saw a demonstration of karate skills by the interns. For GRTS News, I am Deiko Mademba. Well, you can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website, which is at www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live, where we go with our very first break. The news continues in just a moment. Beginning June 1st to December 31st, 2012, GRTS Marketing brings you attractive offers for your businesses. Summertime. Beginning June 1st, you can enjoy our discounted summer advertisement packages. The European Nations Cup, the world's most watched tournament, kicks off in Warsaw, Poland in June 2012 bringing a collection of the world's finest players. The UEFA Champions League commences in September 2012, and this is the world's most competed and coveted competition, which is followed by millions of people around the world. Come partner with GRTS and advertise your products and services during this special promotion period. 
For those who pay upfront, you will enjoy a huge discount. Call us today on 437-8775 or 437-7214 or better still 437-5692. GRTS. Welcome back. In eastern Afghanistan, an apparent suicide attack against a military convoy has left at least four soldiers dead. NATO has not released the nationalities of those killed, but French media reports that the casualties are from France. Meanwhile, the issue of unexploded weaponry could be a dark legacy left by NATO forces in Afghanistan. CNN's Mohammed Jamjoun has a look at the extent of the problem outside just one base. Sounds of battle echo across a desolate stretch of land east of the biggest U.S. base in Afghanistan. Turns out, it's just battle practice. Villagers living around the East River Range say they're paying the price. Kids wander around and touch what they find. These kids, they don't know what is and isn't full of explosives, says Wali Mohammed Kuchi. These boys are waiting to scavenge for leftover metal casings to earn their families much needed cash. Wali Muhammad, who lost a leg and arm to Soviet landmines in the 1980s, worries for his 13-year-old son, Esahil. According to Afghanistan's leading demining NGO, at least 12 civilians from the range area have been maimed by unexploded ordnance in the last four years. At least one was killed. Shepherds graze their sheep on slopes littered with bullets, grenades, and in a recent case, an anti-aircraft rocket, according to the U.S. military. When I picked it up and then hit it with a stone, it exploded, says Abdul Rahman. Four weeks after the explosion, the 17-year-old still winces from pain to his eyes and left arm. He lost part of his other arm in a similar explosion several years ago. He believes that in both incidents, he was hurt by U.S. ordnance. His father, Zayar Gul, lost a leg to a Soviet-era landmine. He says it's U.S. forces who are now sowing destruction. It wasn't just something thrown from the sky. If it wasn't for the Americans doing their military exercises here, why would my son have been blown up, he asks. All along this 20-kilometer or 13-mile stretch is wide open land with very little to indicate any danger. The few signs we've found to warn this is a firing range are like this, in faded English. For a largely illiterate population that speaks mostly Dari and Pashto, it's almost impossible for them to understand their lives are at risk. Unexploded munitions now account for three times as many casualties as mines, most of them children, according to the Mine Action Coordination Center of Afghanistan. More seriously. Its chief of operations says to a certain degree, U.S. forces have failed in their duty to Afghan civilians. They should, have, should do something uh, to make sure that the civilians are protected after the war is finished or after the training is finished. Sergeant First Class Steve Cunningham says his unit does the right thing. We pick up the trash and we pick up after ourselves. Uh, we brought it with us, we're taking it back with us. The U.S. military says it understands the dangers. War is an inherently dangerous business and we try to mitigate that danger by consolidating those test firings and those routine, so to speak, uh, firing and, and expenditure of weapons, munitions into a controlled area. As a grandfather of seven, he says he empathizes. I know how I'd feel if my kids got injured. I, I think uh, we have to uh, do a better job of marking. And Hartman says the military intends to minimize future casualties. After a decade of U.S. presence here, that will come too late for Abdul Rahman. Mohammed Jamjoum, CNN, near Bagram Air Base, Afghanistan. Talk of a Spanish bank bailout is swirling around the Eurozone. On Saturday, the International Monetary Fund released two reports containing 130 pages of graphs, charts and analysis about what the Spanish government will need to offset its ailing economy. The IMF says Madrid will need some $50 billion of urgent financial aid to help stem its economic slide. Meanwhile, the head of the IMF told CNN's Christian Amanpour that Spain is making some big changes, but it is just the beginning. Of maximum crisis, it seems, in Europe. Spain, all eyes are on Spain. I understand that the IMF has been urging Spain to seek a bailout. The international community has been urging Spain to seek some help. You know, the IMF is looking under the skin of countries. And uh, as we speak, there is a team of the IMF that is conducting what we call the Article 4, which is a review of each and every component of the Spanish economy. We do that on a regular basis. We are just on the ground at the moment. We think three things. One is 
uh, from a fiscal point of view, they're doing 